Hi family, I'm Stephanie Wadey. I'm Habasia. I'm talking to you from where? The motherland, the Gambia. I'm in Buford, y'all. <laughs> I'm in Buford Valley or Village or it's in it's in uh, Buford. We just say I've seen that ad on uh, YouTube so much about Bruford Gardens and all of that. Well, they have all kind of other additions to Bruford, also. So we'll just say Bruford Village because it doesn't matter exactly where I am. You know that I'm where in the motherland. <laughs> and today I'm going to share just. A little of my thoughts while I'm just sitting here on the front porch. My cup that everybody likes because the motherland is always on my mind. And I know it's on some of y'all's minds too. And I will not act like it's mine because it's not. Came from Motu. which is a nice Jamaican restaurant that's a hangout for the expats. I went shopping yesterday, y'all, with some friends, well, with a friend of mine, and I used a private driver, and it was nice, y'all. It was nice. Interesting. Really interesting. Nice. And as always, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do. If you're coming back, thanks for the visit. This is non-scripted, y'all. Whatever I say is strictly my story. I am a griot. I am one of many from my family of griots. That's the reason why I'm in the Gambia, because somebody could not tell their story of their surname because they were not allowed to speak their language in the West. Definitely not in the United States. I was told we didn't have surnames until the white man gave us the surname, you know, old Massa. But that wasn't true. I found that out when I arrived in the Gambia. All I was doing was researching my grandmother's first name, Cora. And so since someone, more than likely a griotis, because from all the research I've been doing, they abused us our poor men so badly that their numbers dwindled a lot and the population grew because of all of the abuses done to the women. So more than likely it was female griotis that started naming the children, the female children, Cora, so that one day one of their descendants would go back to the motherland and share the story of what happened and while we were gone and come back home. And I came back home, guys. So if we've been telling stories before we left the motherland, keeping the histories of the kings and the queens and of the village and our people, I'm not going to stop now. So I'm comfortable because this is what I do. I'm comfortable on this video because that's what my people have done forever, told stories. Sometimes it makes people laugh. Sometimes I guess it made people cry because not all stories are funny ones. But anyways... I am not a gossip columnist, like I said on the other videos. I'm not gossiping about whatever is happening anywhere in the world. And I'm not going to uh, backstab my country that I left from. 
awful things happen there and awful things happen everywhere. But I'm here for peace, my personal peace. That's it. And I don't mean to insult anyone with anything I say. Nothing I say is about anybody, any people group in general at all. Whenever I'm using my stories, it's specifically about me and my friends. That's it. Me and my family. That's the stories that I know. It's from what happened to me. And I'm just telling a story. Anybody who doesn't like stories, this ain't the channel for you guys. It's just not. I'm not going to even make any response to negative comments with shout letters, all caps and all that. Because it doesn't make any sense. I'm here for what, guys? Peace. Peace. And power to the people. And it is disempowering to be negative. And I, I almost didn't say anything this morning, but my ancestors motivated me to do so. So now that it's addressed, I'm done with it. I was at the Timbuktu bookstore yesterday, and I was told that, you know, it's the biggest bookstore. I've seen one small one when we was passing by, and I think they have others, little ones around. As time goes on, I'll try my best to stop into those too and see what type of books they have, you know? I just don't know. But the one that I went to yesterday, that Timbuktu one, it actually had a lot of nice artifacts inside of it and a good selection of books. I was actually impressed with their selection. I got some children's books because I like to collect books. Hey, dog. That dog just loves to talk, y'all. I, I don't know what the dog's saying, but that's the way it goes. And I didn't ask the dog's name yet. Oh, I think that dog wanted me to laugh. So <laughs> I don't want to go off the off the thing. Sometimes storytellers is like. It's all being led, you know. But anyway, when I was at that uh, Timbuktu uh, bookstore yesterday, I saw all kinds of people in there. You know, most of them look like you and me. Might have different accents, you know. Because I'm assuming that all of you watching me, all of y'all sound different than me. I don't even sound like all typical Texans, neither. I do not. I do not say I sound like all Texans, because I don't. I don't. I just copy who? My patience. <laughs> That's it. My patience and probably my family after a while, you know? But I was around my patients more because I worked so much when I was young and when I first moved back to Texas. But that is stories for other days. <laughs> but anyway, I was impressed by the selection. And now I know when I'm in the motherland, it is somewhere that I could buy books if I needed to. And you see this necklace, y'all? I got that yesterday. How y'all like it? I hope y'all like it. Anyway, guys, they actually had some little... Uh, things you could get upstairs. This tea, I got this because I wanted to say I got it from the motherland because I already had some moringa tea, as y'all know. But this is 100% natural moringa tea. It has an expiration date on it even, so hey, I don't have to make sure I use it by that time, even though I doubt if tea air expires for real. And uh, mint tea, I got that because I like the way it smells. <sighs> I wish y'all could smell it. I'll smell it for y'all. <laughs> it smells marvelous. 
and it was 200 the last C. The other one was about, uh, I think, 160 the last C. And with the last C, so it doesn't seem like monopoly money anymore, I just round it up in U.S. dollars. So if it's 200 it's like four dollars just roughly four dollars like i say if you're a purist my channel is not for you because <laughs> i i am not going to be exact about anything i'm just doing what makes sense to me because i'm trying to work on my reality the majority of your reality starts inside here you know, it's what you've been taught all your life, what you try to unteach yourself. You're important. Whatever you think is good for you. I sure hope what I say doesn't come across as trying to make you think of whatever I think because it's not meant to be. I just mean to just share my story and what my tea with you guys. That's it. My tea. And hopefully what motherland, Africa are your mind and my mind. Hope we have some unifying factors. I'm here for unity, power to the people, <laughs> and not for any divisions. <laughs> I won't talk about anybody or any place negatively. <laughs> I definitely love Gambia, or I would not be here. I love Gambian people, or I would not be here. I respect them and love them. I love my brothers and sisters from the diaspora as well. I sure hope that I don't come across as preferring one against the other because that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be us all having that perfect blend that we come together. We've been separated so long. 400 plus years of separation. So it's going to take at least that amount of time to become a unified people again. And it won't be in my lifetime, guys. But I do know that my DNA is on its way. <laughs> over and over again through my grandchildren and spiritually through my great-grandchildren because I have them through adoption. I adopted my daughter when she was a young girl. She was around 11 years old. And I'll let her tell her um, story, but I'm just saying that our family grows in different ways sometimes. And mine grew by birth. I had three sons, and I always wanted a daughter. I almost adopted a baby when I was married to my husband, but they told us we had to wait until our baby we just had was 15 months old and then we could do it. And by that time, <laughs> I can't even say the rest of that story. <laughs> I'll leave that one for other days too. But to make that long story short, when I was single, I'm a single parent adopted my daughter and that's how my family grew to have a girl. And then later on, she had a girl. And then later on, my son, Ashadu, had a girl. And when he had a girl, I was watching his son in the park. 
And when they told me the sex, I was so crazy. I was like, are you sure? Because it was like, I didn't want to get my hopes up. <laughs> and he said, yeah. And that was Faja, my, my first uh, birth granddaughter. And she looks like me. She looks like me. She even wears glasses like me. <laughs> She went into the military like I almost did. But guys, hey, it was the 70s. My friends had been drafted into the military and had awful things happen to them. And I had heard such horror stories that I chickened out. I chickened out. I signed up to go and, and never even made it to taking the test or the physical to go to the military. Just couldn't do it. Scared to death. But my granddaughter, she went on and she's a medic. So here's to you, Baja. Mm, that mint tea is good. It is good, guys. But anyways, I was the only child. I was born and raised in Galveston, Texas, USA. My mother was a single parent. I lived with my grandparents for a lot of my life because my mother was with them at first and then she married my stepfather and they lived together and their own place. I visited her <laughs> just like a lot of people's kids do in the USA anyways when they get remarried because <laughs> they have to get used to the new spouse and sometimes with families it takes a while to blend and the blend is not always homogeneous <laughs> you know they're not all go to fit together so easily Sometimes it takes almost a lifetime when my own, I was already a, a grown, born-again Christian before I was uh, adult enough to love him just the way he was. And at that point, too, he became a person that could actually say, I love you, you know? And that's what I want to always remember, the good parts. So, here's to my family that are not ancestors. Little libation, guys. Give them a little my tea. That's the first time I gave any ancestors libation tea, but the mint was good. Seemed like they wanted that. And no, I'm not going to respond to any negativity about my ancestors. I'm telling my story, and I'm sticking to it, guys. <laughs> if you want to say something different, make your own channel. It's free. Let you fight with the internet when you try to upload your videos and all that. Oh, guys, I did get a new router yesterday, and I'm charging it up. But they told me I had five gigabytes that came with the router. And I don't know how long that lasts. They can't even explain it to me in layman's terms. So all I can do is I'll wait until Friday to use it wholeheartedly because that's when the other subscription expires from that other internet. That's awful. Slow, slow, slow. I won't even say their name neither. But anyways, guys, starting from probably Saturday, I'm going to try to do the downloads with that new internet and I'm what? Praying. <laughs> 
that it will work a lot better than the one that I'm using right now. I hope it's faster so I can upload more videos. People told me that's what they want. They say they want me to, to talk longer. <laughs> I have lots of stories at 67. I do. I have plenty of stories. Y'all give me good things to talk about sometimes. <laughs> like I said, I try not to say nothing that addresses some of the negative stuff, but if my ancestors lead me to say something, then I have to say something, and, and I did. But hopefully the majority of the stuff was all positive, because I want y'all to be happy this morning. It's so peaceful in this garden. Why not if I just be quiet? I can hear the birds singing. Sometimes they're louder than others. And maybe it's because I'm, I'm more quiet than other times. But I can't say this enough. I came here for peace, and I've gotten it. I'm getting it. I'm, I'm healing. I'm human. Uh, and the only reason why I seem so comfortable when I'm talking is because I'm talking to a camera and it's no other people here that's saying anything. When I get a thousand subscribers, I will open it up. Because I have what? New internet. <laughs> I have it. I have it. And I'll see how good that internet works with the lie. But in the meantime, guys, Please like, share, comment down below. I think the birds are trying to help me out there. It's such a gentle breeze this morning, guys. I wish I could share that breeze with y'all. All those stories you heard about Africa, like I said, I can't do any generalizations because Africa's a continent. I'm just talking about my little one piece of paradise right here in, in Bruford. I have all of these trees around me. I know it's hard for y'all to see it. But I have trees all in the back. And uh, what they do is keep it so cool. I guess they make the environment even enticing to the birds. So I have birds. Excuse me. Excuse me for doing that. I have birds singing, a gentle breeze. While I'm enjoying my tea and talking to you guys. It's been good, y'all. This tea was good. I wish I could share it with every one of you guys. But let's visualize it. It was good, y'all. Hit the spot. Like I said, no generalizations. This particular place of in paradise is nice. Calming. It's cool. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, San Diego, California, San Jose, California. You know, that type. That type weather, actually. 
you know, especially if you go towards the beach area. As you can reach the beach here by just going that way, I believe, <laughs> and it end up at the sea. But anyway, guys, I'm, I'm feeling the sea breeze, and I'm listening to the birds, and I just feel peace. I wish my family was here, but maybe one day they'll come visit. I know my grand, uh, great-granddaughter, Aria, shout out. <laughs> And Riley, I ain't gonna leave you out, girl. <laughs> oh, Aria wants to come and hang out with me. She was so mad I didn't take her with me. Like I said, hopefully her parents are working on her passport so she can come and hang out with her great-grandmother uh, in the motherland. They call me Grammy. <laughs> Yeah, that's my name that they call me, Grammy. So she can come hang out with her Grammy in the motherland. So anyway, for my grand, my great grandchildren and my grandchildren, I miss y'all. I wish y'all was here. To all my cousins, my sons, my daughter. All my grandchildren, all my friends, my my church members at Shrine in the Black Madonna. Power to the people, y'all. I'm living my best life in the motherland. And that's one of the things we say at church, living the best life. So we should all live our best life one day at a time. And that's what I'm doing. Until next time, guys. Peace, peace, power to the people. And I'm out, y'all. Bye.